I think one of the really powerful things about flow arts is it's something that is participatory. It's something mm -hmm. that's not necessarily about going and seeing somebody else do it. It's an incredible art form that it can be showcased just as well as any other circus act. There's a risk of throwing the baby out with the bathwater because... <laughs> what? You've never heard that phrase? <laughs> no! Oh. That's messed up. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun to edit. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, Drex here from DrexFactor.com, and I am here with my good friend Lux Luminous, uh, Levy Wand Spinner Extraordinaire, and today we are having a discussion that I've actually had quite a few times in the past few months. Are the Flow Arts Circus? Why or why not? And if they're not, should they be? Before we dive in, I'd just like to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. Cool. So why am I having this chat with my friend Lux? What a great question. Um, the biggest reason is that this is one of those videos that was requested by my supporters on Patreon, and Lux and I have opposite opinions on this matter. And I thought it would be really fun to put together this video as like an open discussion, uh, both so that both viewpoints are represented here, as well as, you know, you can get a feel for some of the arguments pro and con in this. So Lux, why don't you go ahead and start us off since you're the <laughs> pro side. Uh, why are the Flow Arts Circus? I think that the Flow Arts, uh, traditionally Flow Arts are not like traditional circus, but a subgenre. Um, that's, you know, you take anything like juggling or object manipulation, which you do see in circus, and that's pretty much what flow arts is, except for it's a more modern twist and more dancing instead of, you know, the more theater aspect that you see in circus. I, so this is a thing that I've seen happen a lot, is people talking about flow arts as being something under the umbrella of circus yeah. arts. And I really just don't get that. So can, can you explain to me how we fit under that umbrella? So, I mean, circus has kind of, like, taken in the misfits of arts. Like, you've seen in circus, like, freak shows, you've seen juggling, mm -hmm. you've seen blockhead acts. Like, circus, I think, just takes in the things that really don't belong anywhere else. <laughs> it's just like, well, we're going to go ahead and take this. Even though, yes, juggling has been around since mm -hmm. ancient times, it, in the past, like, couple hundred years, it's definitely been a part of circus. It's an incredible art form that it can be showcased just as well as any other circus act. Yeah, no, that's true. I'm not going to put words into your mouth here, but like, I believe that there is this kind of core idea you have that if circus and flow arts work together, that there are opportunities there for partnership and everything. Oh, 100%. Yeah, and that I'm not disagreeing with. Yeah. And that I would love to hear a little bit more about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, just in fact that there's circus studios in almost every large, you know, city right. throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Being able to, uh, you know, partner with these people and offer more flow arts classes at circus centers, get kids involved. They already have children going there. Mm -hmm. Like, these are things that are, that we are missing in the flow arts community. We don't have studios. This is something that circus already has established mm -hmm. that we can jump on and be like, hey, we want to also do this. We need that, you know, that longevity to the art form that, you know, circus has, juggling has, uh, martial arts has, yeah. that we just, we don't. Yeah. And that's the best way to do it. Well, it, and there's a really interesting thread there that I want to kind of pick out in that, like, um, it, it, you know, when you go to circus gyms and there's opportunities to, you know, learn balancing or mm -hmm. aerials or juggling or what have you, like, these are all things that kind of exist somewhat autonomously, but circus has done a great job of aggregating them together into one place. Yes. And it, it seems to me like um, the one of those things that we as flow artists have a really bad habit of is being kind of inward looking in that we don't often accept answers that come from outside of the flow arts, you know? I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Cool. So why do I think that flow arts are not circus? Basically, I think it comes down to the intention. There are a lot of different arts out there that involve manipulating objects, whether it be martial arts. There is a long tradition of that in the dance world as well. And I don't think that circus has any more claim to us than any of these other arts do. There's a lot of reasons to engage in an art, you know? Uh, one of the things that I've really loved in coming through the dance world has been 
coming at it from a perspective of saying, this is not about doing the most impressive thing I can do on stage. Mm -hmm. This is about me exploring what I'm feeling right now and mm -hmm. expressing it and finding a way to work through the stuff that's going on in my head. So even still, so we're talking about performance and whatnot, and I still think floor artists talk about performing and wanting sure. to perform and do acts all the time, and even still, like, what they uh, shoot for Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is still definitely performance. Yeah. So, and I don't see why that we can't share the same stage. Well, okay, so f first up, it's not like there's no performance element to flow arts whatsoever, yeah. but you don't necessarily go into flow arts to become a performer. There are plenty of people yeah. that, you know, will pick up a prop and then decide yeah. they want to put it on stage, and, you know, that's totally cool. We've, we, like, I, I, I think that that is a particular subset of the culture, and there's mm -hmm. absolutely a Venn diagram there of overlap with circus arts and everything. You're most likely to see people that fit into both cubby yes. holes there. Um, but there are tons of people, I, I've met loads of them through my travels and everything, that, like, very much do not want to be on the internet, that very much do not want people to see what they're oh, doing. Yeah. And, I, I especially don't think circus is the right label for those folks. Mm. That is true. But even, like, a lot of circus artists, like, I know plenty of people that go and train at circus, like, studios for aerials and, you know, what have mm -hmm. you. They don't get on stage. They do it just for the practice as well. No, totally. So and, why not? And I, I would definitely say that aerials is one of those things that, in a lot of cases, fits in that Venn diagram between the two as yeah. well. I mean, we certainly see a lot of aerial rigs showing up at Flow Arts Festivals. Oh, 100%. Um, and again, you know... There's there are, so much overlap. Yeah, it, it, but there are plenty of people that do aerials purely for, you know, the fun of it. Mm -hmm. That are like, you know, professionals that do it as weekend warriors. Yeah that are never going to put it on stage mm -hmm. and that just do it for the same reason that they do yoga, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, something that is a physical activity that they can do that they think looks really beautiful. I think one of the really powerful things about flow arts is it's something that is participatory. It's something mm -hmm. that's not necessarily about going and seeing somebody else do it, but about the practice that you get to do yourself. So, still, we have um, people under circus and people under flow arts that are pretty much doing the same thing for themselves and not for stage shows, so... <laughs> well, but... Okay, so... Same, same, but different? <laughs> well, 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 well. Okay, so here's the curveball I'm going to throw you on this okay. one. So why doesn't martial arts fall under either category? I think it can. Um, so I think that the difference between martial arts when it becomes circus versus when it's not circus, so or flow arts, mm -hmm. um, is you know, stage performance, uh, uh, theatrical uh, character work, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. When you're doing uh, martial arts in the traditional martial arts way, I don't think that it really you know, falls under either category, because it falls under martial arts. It's the same thing in the yeah. dance world, how you can learn the choreography and everything, but you, yeah. f like, well, uh, the, the modern dance, jazz, and, and, uh, and, and hip-hop worlds, where you can find your own interpretation yes. within the choreography. Yeah. 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 Okay, so then, what makes martial arts different from, from dance in that regard? That's a hard one. That's a really hard one. <laughs> Because it is, it is fairly dancey. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't know if I'm the best person to be able. Well, but in in the way that you look at them, you see them as different things, right? Yes. Why? I feel like because there's there's much more form to it than the, the self expression. There's more form to martial arts than self expression. Yes. Okay, that I would agree with. Yeah, yeah. totally. And I think that that's where the difference lies. Okay, intention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, martial arts is object manipulation. Okay. It is that. Okay. Is it flow arts though? Is, is flow arts object manipulation? It or? is. It is, but Okay. Well okay. I I I wanna I wanna stick a pin in this right quick because uh -huh. we just introduced an entirely new <laughs> category to this discussion. <laughs> and I want to stipulate, uh, are we talking about object manipulation as its own thing, autonomous, from of arts. circus, of flow arts, yes. of martial arts, yes. and of dance? Okay, yes. cool. I'm on board with that. Yeah. Okay. Because, like, pin spinning. Sure, yeah. And but skateboarding. Pin is not, yeah. Skateboarding. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we also talk about, like, you know, gloving. Is gloving a flow art? Hmm. And there's I, a lot of overlap there. Yeah. yeah. The, culturally, the, there's a huge amount of overlap yeah. there. But at the same time, like, one of those things that, like, was really like, oh, to me, the first time I saw somebody gloving is yeah. 
they are so up in your business. Oh, like, for sure. Per, like the personal bubble is just not there. Nope. And as a flow artist, you're used to having this like six foot bubble around you that is like your space. Oh, you know? for sure. Um, and like there's some elements like that to circus that I, I don't really want us to take on. But at the same time, there, there's this idea in circus of having all of these different arts living under the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. And if we kind of treat ourselves as this very unique thing that doesn't have, you know, peers in this way, yes. then we're going to wind up cut off from a lot of the great opportunities that we could have to cross-pollinate from dance, martial arts, so on and so forth. I mean, but it is still very dance. It very mm -hmm. much is. And that's what separates the floor arts from circus, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It is the dance aspect. Well, I think it's the dance and meditative elements. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. um, but you throw it on a stage, it's another circus act. It can be. I've put, I've put uh, flow arts on stage as dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your style is very much, much more dance versus... Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's, that's definitely, <laughs> like, not very many people do that. <laughs> um, Maybe but they still. should. <laughs> so the, the big difference is the, the floor arts community doesn't have the, the money coming in that mm. circus does. Right. Until we have people, like, actually investing in floor arts, we're not going to see these kinds of things. Right. So we're not going to get studios. We're not going to have, you know, uh, well-funded children programs or even camps, like a floor art camp for the weekend. Oh, my mm. gosh. That would be fantastic to get kids in because you see that, like with um, we have a circus uh, that does stuff with children as well, and they do this whole thing during the summer where it's an entire camp that they go, they train with professionals, right. and like if we could just get there, I think things would be a lot different. Well, and I I, I think there's a lot of opportunities there in terms of like you know. When, when, when I first started teaching, I was teaching at a dance studio, and mm -hmm. what I was doing was considered a part of the dance curriculum there and everything, right? There's a lot of opportunity there for overlap with yoga. There's a lot of opportunity there for overlap with martial arts. Yeah. I've, I've taught at martial arts studios as I've toured before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, 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 it seems like maybe one of those... It, it's interesting because, like, the entirety of this debate has really been centered around, like, are we this thing or are we not this thing? Um, and it seems like part, there, there's almost a, there's a risk of throwing the baby out with the bathwater because... <laughs> what? You've never heard that phrase? No. Oh. That's messed up. This is going to be so fun to edit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, I, I do, I do want to stick a pin in that because I do think it is worth us it is both worth us defining our identity as being something unique in the object manipulation world, mm. as well as understanding that other arts have come up with answers to a lot of the problems that we face. And it's not necessarily a bad thing to go look over their shoulder and be like, hey, how did you do this? And oh, for sure. what lessons can we take from that, you know? But we do such a bad job of collaborating. It's such a bad job. A lot of times, yes. And yeah. that's, like, with my main focus in New England, because that's where I live, uh, yeah. <laughs> it has been to merge everybody together. Mm -hmm. uh, and doing so, it, we have gotten much larger. I don't doubt that that's true. I think that the whole terminology, like, flow arts, like, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't sound, it's not practice arts, you know? Mm -hmm. Flow. Like, go with the flow. It, like, something about that, and I've always had this issue with the term flow arts, and mm -hmm. why I usually go for object manipulation over, right. you know, saying flow arts, is because it does have that kind of hippie, like, you know, come with yeah. the flow kind of feeling versus something that is actually really serious. Right, no, and I mean... And which I, I take very seriously. Totally, I do yeah. too. And I mean, once upon a time, um, I also really didn't like the term flow arts. Mm -hmm. It took a long time for me to be comfortable with it. And ironically yeah. enough, it was interacting with circus artists that made me, like, gravitate towards calling myself a flow artist. Really? Yeah, because I just, Weird. you know, I, I would hang out with them and it was just really abundantly clear. It's like, these are people with whom I have quite a bit in common, but mm -hmm. this is not me. This is not what I'm doing. Hmm. Um, and y y nobody had come up with a better term for it. And so eventually I'm just like, okay, sure. I'm a flow artist and it works. <laughs> <laughs> I think object manipulation is much better, but it's like very like, it's like, so broad. It's though. So broad. It's so broad. It, it puts everything under the same umbrella. Yeah. But uh, again, that is, 
I, I, I think it is helpful for us to have a term for this unique cr combination of object manipulation yeah. and dance and meditation and performance yes. that like it's is very unique to to how we we it is. regard ourselves. It's you so know? I don't know. I, I think that when you are building a culture up from the ground, you have the ability to set but certain expectations. But we're not building this from the ground. All well, of these totally art forms are. come well before any of us. Yeah, but the way we synthesize those elements together is something that's newer and unique. Okay, I'll agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Like, but they, the, all these props have hundreds of years totally, behind them. Totally, but... Like, in their own right. A, a, a Maori woman spinning poi yes. 300 years ago is not necessarily doing it for the same reason that no know, definitely not yeah one in the united states is doing it yes no th there, there's absolutely that ancient context for all of these different props well yes. in some cases and in some cases we're making them up brand new i mean dragon staff and puppy hammer i, I yeah like those have well, both meteor yeah and which is also <laughs> to say that i i have very 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 good friends that are in the circus world i have very oh, yeah. good friends they're jugglers yep. uh, acro artists mm -hmm and all that and i have a lot of respect for them they're amazing yes. they're amazing performers they have incredible discipline mm -hmm. um but i respect them in the same way that you know i respect glass artists that's not what i do interesting you know yeah no i feel like anytime i am like practicing with other circus artists i feel very at home mm -hmm. like i feel which i mean that's my own personal like feeling at home, right, right. you know like not everybody's gonna feel that way mm -hmm. like i feel like i could just go into a circus studio and feel like all right gonna i'm here i'm gonna train i'm gonna do what i need to do and like having that motivation because i have all these performers next to me also hammering it out mm -hmm. i get that motivation that i need yeah i i like structure i just want <laughs> no, I get that. I I don't know. I I don't have. I I I personally enjoy practicing alone. Honestly, like mm -hmm. I, it's actually way more intimidating for me to to practice in a gym. Really? Yeah, yeah. I like being in a place where I can literally just shut out the rest of the world yeah. and focus just on what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, that means that I'll go practice alone in a park someplace and throw on my headphones and everything. And yeah. that that to me is just the essence of what practice feels like in flow arts. You know, of just <laughs> by yourself yeah. spinning. Yeah, no, it yeah. is. It can be extremely antisocial, and I think that we push that in. Not anti. Not anti antisocial social is a very That's, negative way of framing that. But like, not, it's like. It is a thing in flow arts mm -hmm. to go practice by yourself versus yeah. uh, practicing in a group setting, yeah. which is, that's why I love jams. I mm -hmm. love our you can, weekly... Why can't we have both? I don't know. I think that more structure would be good for what we do, which we lack. I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. 100%. I, I, but I don't I think, like I, I don't think that the way to do that then is to march into somebody else's structure and say, yes, we will become <laughs> one with your Borg collective. Mm, I love the Borg. Yeah. <laughs> and, and but if we did, if we all collectively came together and was like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, and then started pushing and, you know, going into studios and offering classes. Well, and... I, I, then it would change. Yes, I, I agree. And I think also part of what I'm going for there is, you know, Let's create the flow art studios and let's also make those places a home mm -hmm. for our peer groups, you know? Let's yeah, <laughs> let's let's make those studios places where people can mm -hmm. come to do martial arts classes yeah. and dance yeah. classes. Versus just completely just fizzle out. And I totally agree. And yeah. I, I think this is where you and I are on the same page yes. with this. <laughs> is that the challenge Something. here <laughs> just yeah, the challenge here is for flow arts to mature as yes. an art. Yes. For the people that practice it to number one, take themselves seriously yes. as artists. And number two, learn to create formal structures around them, whether they be nonprofits or yes. whether they be businesses. Yes. And that we work to keep the art alive by, you know, moving beyond simply being, you know, the you know, hippies spinning in the woods and everything, and being people that formally create mm -hmm. the vocabulary around the art. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, like, we need to stop, like, doing our art form away from people. Like, mm -hmm. music, like festivals and whatnot, like, we are always very much secluding ourselves, where people cannot see us. Well, and I think we can have both. I think we can definitely have both. I think that, mm -hmm. like, what I would like to see going into the future is uh, to have more events, like, 
in public view, mm-hmm. like yeah, uh, totally. in in cities, yeah, like Be, so that way people can more see people it. to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I think what we've arrived at is this is a challenge for all of you guys out there that are watching. Help us keep the flow where it's alive, and you know, do so by creating businesses and creating opportunities for people to see it. It should just be circus. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Try the circus. Assimilate. Assimilate. Do it. Save us. Save us. What do you guys think? Are the flow arts circus? Are they something different? What makes the flow arts unique if they are not circus? And what can we do to save the flow arts and make them a bigger save part of our world? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Cool. So I just want to thank Lux again for joining me for this discussion and for uh, bringing a really wonderful point of view to it. Um, I really hope that one of the things you guys take away from this is that we can have differences of opinion and still get along. Lux and I are very good friends, even though we totally disagree on this stuff. <laughs> and when you're having these discussions out in the social media sphere, remember, be respectful, make friends, because we're better off when we're making friends from this when, than when we're making enemies. Um, and of course, you can find Lux Luminous on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. I will include links to all of her stuff uh, down in the description here because she's an amazing Levy One spinner. <laughs> and uh, if you guys are into Levy One, she has a whole bunch of tutorials over on her channel that you should go check out. It's much more glitter over there. It's true. And teal. It's it's very teal in lots of Levy One. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I'm, 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 I'm she way she's boy. way more colorful than I am. <laughs> Come for the glitter and the wands, the magic. <laughs> and stay for the color. Uh, and of course, uh, before we head out, I just want to give a massive thank you to my awesome supporters on Patreon. Uh, it is because of these nice folks that this video and all the videos on my channel exist, and I could not make these videos without their support. If you would like to sign up to support the work that I'm doing, please head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. Thank you in advance. Oh my god, so that was one of the most difficult videos I have ever had to edit because there was so much good content that we talked about. We talked for nearly an hour and there was so much good stuff that we had to leave on the editing room floor. Um, if you are thirsty for more, if you'd like to find out everything that we talked about, the full unedited video is available over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi as a reward for my supporters. You can go on over there and sign up and get to see everything that we discussed. <laughs>